Alright. Okay. Alright, welcome everyone. We are in the middle of a dungeon. I am Dragon in White and I have forgotten to press the record button. <laughs> and we have with us <laughs> Fluffy and mine. Hello. Hey, yeah. how's it going? Thanks for joining us. Okay, so, yep. Looks like, uh, clearly I have just woken up lots of things that I still haven't, uh, I messed up on some of the sound stuff earlier. I have my sound fitting into two different tracks. One for my desktop, one for the recording, and I forgot to shift the game to the recording track. So for a while we didn't have oh, sound so... either. Sorry. <laughs> boss fight. Okay. Well, mini boss. Do the thing, yes. With the... There oh. we go. Oh, no. I'm just Which is turn front? This that is front. Yeah, as a healer, this dungeon is really irritating just because of all the uh, the bleed and the slow. Oh, I yeah. don't heal those off for the most part, except for with the tank. They just fall off of everybody else. Yeah, but sometimes, like on the tank, I had one. I had like four or three or four instance tech and. Their health just drop like nuts. There you go. Let me go through it. I wanna go through it. Ooh. I'ma need those. Take it. Uh, wait. Um, wait, we didn't hit the thing. Yeah. I'm hitting the thing. I'm Thank hitting you. the <laughs> This the poor thing. person with Mechanics. us. Oh no. Okay, so I warned them. I warned them. That's fair. Um, okay. Are there more friends in here? I don't know. So, today, we were intending to discuss uh, structures and um, kind of the cultural understanding with Chinese families, correct? Yep, that is correct. So maybe before we start with what is Chinese, how about let's start with what is normal in the Western world, European, American. I'm pretty sure that is that's a dead end. That's that's a dead end. Oh, I okay. Mini I map. To the Come on. End. I'm looking at my mini map. It's mini. Expand it. I make my. I use the bigger map when I'm leading through. I don't. <laughs> Oh, I'm that makes healer sense. tanking over here. That's what's gonna hey, happen. Hey, 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 get behind me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> as far as. Well, uh, see, American families, there's a wide variety. Um, I can't say for some of the other countries, um, it kind of differs. You know, there's, there's cultural differences everywhere. But. Okay, In how about US. I start with what I know and you correct me on okay. where I'm wrong. So one of, the, okay. one of the structures that I see in the US uh, family structure... Uh, okay, so you have your mom, your dad, okay? So standard, I mean we're speaking English, so things are... they make sense. So from what I hear for many people on reaching college, they get kicked out of home. Uh, not everyone. Depends on your parents. There, it depends on, yeah, it depends on your parents. Uh, oh. It is pretty common for, or at least it was, pretty common at one point for uh, kids to kind of leave the house. Uh, wait, at that's 18. dead end. Uh, at 18. And whether they're, they're going into the workforce, whether they're going to college, it is kind of common practice for them to strike out on their own. But again, it depends on the family. Uh, a lot of kids will stay with living with their parents while they're going to school. And not everybody goes to school. In fact, we have a large uh, percentage of the population that doesn't go to school after, or go to college or university after high school. Because it's not free here. Yeah. It's, it's not free, Ed. Expensive. Well, for most places. It's it's not even just not free. It's it's expensive. Oh no! Yeah. Ah, uh, this is the other Come one I hate. Come back and save me. I'm coming. 
Yeah, yeah so... Yeah. Yep, so there's that part where I know whereby once you hit 18 or once you start working, I know that there is a portion of Americans who get kicked out of home and not just Americans. I got a couple of friends in uh, UK that had that as well. Um, yeah. I can say that I did strike out on my own at 18. Um, I did not. Well, but, I went to college, yeah. but I didn't really count that. I was in I the did not go to college right after high school. I actually went into the workforce and I left the house and got my own place. Cool. And went on a grand adventure. So the way it was initially described to me was that once you hit 18, they go, all right, pack your bags, you're getting out. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know anybody that actually had that happen. <laughs> Unless uh, they were in trouble with their parents. But we don't have enough photo cells. There, there's one here. Oh, you have to go over here, yeah. I thought we would have had enough during the extra room we we done. Oh well. Uh, okay, so now in contrast, a Chinese family is more family oriented and getting kicked out of the house is not an issue unless you are, like you say, in trouble with your parents. So, uh, the whole concept of Chinese um, family is that they stay together. In fact, uh, we don't have to go further. We do have to go further? We don't have enough? Uh, we have enough, we, have we just needed that one. Yeah. Oh. So, so, uh, so I believe also in the Western setup, um, it's more common that when you start a family, like, you know, get married, you are basically staying on your own, right? Yeah, so one thing I, I've been talking to a lot of the people I've worked with kind of in this industry that I've noticed is really different is that we do not typically live with grandparents or live yep. with the parents. So by the time in our society we kind of have kids, you are looking for a place on your own. But that's not always the case. It very much depends on stability uh, for the couple and for the parents. I see. Yeah, so uh, in Chinese setup, the concept is that the new family will continue living with well, the parents of the male side because the concept of a marriage, in fact, the word for marry in Chinese already is the part I hate the most. The Chinese concept of, a, of marriage, there are two words for it, in fact. Um, wait, am I ahead of you? Yes, I am. Hold on. We gotta hit the fleshy pods. Okay. Yeah, so there's two words for marriage in Chinese. Uh, namely is qu and jia. As you can tell, sounds very different even though the words makes no sense to you. So, a guy will choose a girl, a female. Um, okay. Yeah. And a female will jia to a guy. So, it is gender specific. So, in the sense whereby when you, uh, the first chu, it actually kind of more of has the meaning of take a wife. And whereas for the female, the meaning is more of marry into the family. So the whole concept okay. there is that the female leaves her family to join the male's family. So, so yeah. yeah, ask your question. You do have multiple generations and living together generally. It is possible, assuming people stays alive. Right. And this is more prevalent in China, I believe, because of their previous one-child policy. So, of course, I mean, eventually it comes to a point where it might be difficult for the entire family to live together if, say, every generation have three siblings. By the time you get to the third generation, that's nine siblings, uh, you know, nine. Right. So there and are, of course... There are of course some variations. Kind of, 
Right, but that is kind of where the um, concept of the... Oh, I'm sorry, it's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> um, the concept of family clans kind of comes in, right? Yeah, so if you see in Chinese novels, you often see that people are gathered in clans. So it is not super strange because that's literally how you have like maybe even seven, eight generations, potentially much more because they have been living together all the while. They eventually sort of being, be able to start an entire village on their own. Uh, in fact, if you go to China, some of the tourist locations you will go will go something like say the the Li clan village. Yeah, literally they are just called the Li clan village because that's where the Li clan stayed at. And yeah. Okay. So when you say that the husband takes the wife, that that's just in more than just how we would say somebody takes like a husband or takes a wife in, in the way that the wives actually are considered a part of the husband's family now, right? Yep. So what does that mean for the wife's family? So basically there is a saying in Chinese, a married daughter is like water poured out. So basically, it just means that, uh, which way is that? It, it means that the daughter is no longer a part of the family, and it is literally poured out, you know, given away to oh. someone else. That's sad. So, I love my family. So I believe, <laughs> I mean, yeah, of course, it's not that you cut all ties, but you just also don't have any. Uh, of course, I'm talking more in ancient times because, you know, things are a little right. different modernly now. Um, I don't think you have to go there. Come back. I don't think I do either. I'm coming back. I just wanted to get rid of the fleshy pod so it wouldn't cause anyone problems. They're you mean. Wouldn't. They suck. Uh, yeah, so where I was I? I don't exactly have any... Uh... Ha! I got you. Okay. Okay, now I recall. So, uh... So it's not as though the, the family of the female get uh, completely cut off. I mean, they can visit, they still have feelings for each other, you know, family love and all. Gotcha. But it right. comes when it comes to legalities of sorts, uh, of course not modern days, but in the past. So basically it means that the female is not entitled to any inheritance or any... Um, privileges that comes with being part of the clan. So... Uh-oh. There we go. So, what does that mean? So, is, that's kind of a cultural across-the-board thing, right? That's not just in Cult of Nation novels. Just women generally uh, don't have a chance to, to inherit from their parents, correct? Yep. What... What right. happens if the, um, what happens if the husband dies and the wife becomes a widower? The wife still remains a part of the male's family and she continues to take care of the husband's parents. Yeah. Okay. Like I say, water poured out. <laughs> Healers aren't salty. Healers are the saltiest. We have a we have a silver in our chat. Why hello? Um. <laughs> yeah. So if anyone got questions during our chat at this point, at any oh, point, yeah, time, I guess you yeah, can hear us. <laughs> feel free to uh, you know pop it in the chat and ask questions. But yes, uh, right. wait. How long is that cut scene? Oh. I watched the whole thing. Why are you still in there? Because I'm still in here. Fine, I'll stop watching the cutscene. No, oh, it's okay. You can watch it. Rudy. Okay, yeah. So they don't have any. They don't enjoy any privileges that comes with being a part of the clan. Uh, so in cultivation novel, that tends to mean you don't get access to certain secrets uh, or decision making, especially. Not that women really had a had a position to make decisions most of in the first place. It's a very patriarchal um, 
kind of society, which uh, to be fair is most of the civilizations at early years. Should yeah, I be the yeah, I'm moving. Why is it not moving with me? Come here. Everybody over here. Come on. Get out of the group. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, it's uh, all good. What are my problems? I have not. Oh, these fleshy pods are a problem. I need to get some of them. Okay, we're gonna heal everybody. Yeah, that would be great. Oh, that was the one. I changed out my key config and I was a little confused on how to unsound my buttons here. But yeah, uh... This is becoming a problem! We gotta <laughs> get these fleshy pods going. Eh, just... Just you know them. Normally we got, we got the that's difficult. Just there kill Rathuti or whatever. That's what you focus on. The big guy. <laughs> that's what I was trying to focus on, but I kept stepping in the goo. <laughs> anyway... Well, Sorry. Let's give this person a commendation. Commendation. Pass. Pass. Yes. Get oh, my commendation. I need that, and I'll just need that as well. Thank I'm you. I'm gonna just dance a little bit here. Okay. So <laughs> let's. I don't know. It, it's, it's interesting to see how very different it is. What is expected of a wife? When, when they get married. And what's expected of the husband? Is there... <laughs> like, how... What is the balance there in a typical Chinese household? Okay, who so... Who has the authority, who doesn't... This is where the interesting part comes in. Uh, I believe you guys got a nice long cut scene here, so I don't mind if you, you guys want to watch it. Um... So we can just chat okay. a little and I can yeah, you know, I, relax I've my mind a little. I've seen it before. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. Okay, so expectations. So I think with the olden Western concept, okay, uh, it's pretty much similar. You know, the guy brings the bacon home, although in their case, it would be Chinese bacon. <laughs> Whatever the equivalent is. Okay, just... Pork belly. Pork belly. Pork I belly, pork excellent. Belly. Uh, they do no. have things that are similar to bacon, but not bacon. But yeah, okay, that aside, uh, you know, the guy <laughs> is in charge of bringing home the bacon. He is the head of the household. He makes decisions. And the women take care of the house and kids. Does it go by age? Uh, for example, if the initial couple is living with the... Yeah, that's, that's also the other thing. So... In cultivation novel, you have the whole concept of clan hates, right? That right. is actually a legit thing. So the clan hate would be, you know, the guy who's just generally in charge, and he's normally of the line of direct descent. Oh uh, well, okay. the first, not just direct descent, but also the firstborn of the firstborn of the firstborn. He's he's always the eldest living member, eldest living male member of that particular family line. It may or may not be, but it really be okay. okay. This is where I am not entirely sure because I didn't grow up in China, and of course, not to mention growing up in China, this is something more of an ancient Chinese practice and no longer happening most of the time okay. today. So okay. it is possible whereby, if I am not wrong. Where let's say, let's let's keep it to a small family, okay? You have okay. the grandfather. Grandfather has a brother, okay? So you have a pair of brothers, and then so basically let's call this the first generation, and then your second generation. Let's say each each grandfather has two kids, so that makes four in the second generation, and then. In the third generation, each one has another two, so let's just multiply that, so that makes it eight. Okay, so now, okay. let's say the elders, the elder of the first generation dies. Leadership can okay. 
passed to the son, the eldest son of the first of the first brother, rather than. Oh. Yeah. That sounds like a breeding breeding pod. No, <laughs> that sounds like uh drama. That sounds like there's drama. Uh, it is potentially is. Cause and that's where you get all your whole clan politics in novels. Boy, my FPS is not doing well in in the in the Interact Plaza. In Gridania. <laughs> oh. I think get we're supposed the to go to Buskeron next, but yep, I'm stopping for my level thirty five White Mage quest. I'm just grabbing it. Oh. I'm not gonna actually do it right now. It's actually pretty fast, that one. I took seven minutes to complete that. Oh, well, she knows. <laughs> I promise yeah. you, she she knows. I've she probably so has it memorized. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, that's where your clan politics come from. Where, you know, struggles mm -hmm. for power. It is potential. I mean, think of it as how, uh, how the, the, uh, the monarchy works. The... Kingship right. doesn't pass to the duke, uh, the archduke, but it passes to the prince. Actually, I'm probably not making sense to some people here, but no, uh, no, no. That typically, typically, you're right. Uh, but it can be different. It can like, be for different. a lot of uh, Western mon monarchies. It it's kind of up to the king's whim. Usually, it'll be his firstborn child. And that's the automatic one. The, the um, eldest son is usually the automatic heir. However, uh, we actually have it. seen... Well, if he doesn't want it or if... Um, depending on whether or not he's fit or the king decides rather that he's fit or not, then it can actually pass on to a king's brother rather than... It also depends on who dies. When it comes to Western royalty politics, oh, there's a lot of bodies on the ground. <laughs> okay, so you can see True. it's about the same idea with the whole clan politics. So, yes, it is okay. sort of to the whim of the clan head before he dies. But at the same time also, um, the clan, the incoming clan head will definitely need the approval of at least like clan elders. Yeah. Okay. So, politics. Politics. Uh, yeah. but how common is the idea of uh, family clans now in modern society? Oh, uh, okay. So let me preface this. I grew up in Singapore, which is not China for most of you who are not familiar what Singapore is or <laughs> where are we. Um, <laughs> we are located to the south of Malaysia in Southeast Asia. Just sitting right on the equator, so season is summer all year round. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, Chinese clans. Okay, yeah. So just to reiterate what I said, cause you know I kind of didn't catch it on um, the recording. So basically, is that most Chinese cultivation novels tend to be set in the ancient Chinese setting. And a lot of things tend to follow the similar uh, similar things in there. And in cultivation novels, one of the things that people fail to catch is the time. The Chinese has 12 two-hour periods with names assigned to it. I believe this actually is the result of some um, some of their how do you call it teachings Chinese teachings. Okay. Chinese philosophy? Uh, philosophy, that's, that's the one. So you have uh, a lot of classics and also of course religion comes into play. But the whole idea behind it also is the he the hexagrams, the... Uh, are you familiar with what the hexagrams are? The trigrams and hexagrams. Um, not entirely familiar. Uh, I, I have heard of the importance but not 100% clear on what that importance is or what it role it plays. 
Okay, so uh, give me one second. I gotta pretend I know nothing. <laughs> okay, I mean to be fair, I can't expect all the readers to know something. So let's start with the basics here. I believe yin yang is a something that most people would understand. Basically, a binary yeah. system. So the whole idea is before the world was created, everything was a formless mess that is known as the uh, primordial chaos or something like that that tends to translate it in novels um i was gonna say ooze yeah ooze so then you know one of the chinese uh deities or creator i think in that in some in some mythologies they call uh panku or pengu for some of you guys who have read novels um that sounds familiar yeah it might sound familiar it does appear in many Chinese novels as well. So he created the world by using his axe to split apart uh, yin and yang. Okay. So from yin and yang, so it's a binary system of positive and negative. And from there you derive the trigrams where you are doing basically a six bit, no, a three bit a three bit system uh for those of you who basically uh like in computer terms of course you know three bit system so it's like zero 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 one zero one 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 zero one so you have right. eight combinations of that getting you the trigrams and from the trigrams you have huh. you mix the combinations again to get sixty four hexagrams. Wow. Yeah. Should I mention now that I failed ge uh, ge geometry? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, and the, no, and no, the... I, I, I'm following. That's a lot of math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a, a lot of math is actually part of the whole the whole thing. Huh. It's interesting because I it seems like um, it's one of the few cultures that involves so much math in its kind of basic philosophies. I don't know. I would say that the Greeks and Egyptians had a lot of math as well. Not necessarily in their philosophies on how to live, though. In well, religions, to a certain extent, and a lot of architecture, absolutely. And math was definitely a big part of their society. Oh, where do we have to go? We have to go to Little Solace. Mm -hmm. We have to go to Hawthorne Hut. I was yep. going to teleport. Oh, wait. One of us can't teleport there. Probably uh, Fluffy. Have you... Um, I have Hawthorne Hut. I have Hawthorne Hut. I have Hawthorne Hut. Okay, yeah. let's try it one more time. It one or more party members. Water... Yeah. Oh, well. We're all going there. Anyway. Weird. So... It, it also kind of, and this is going to sound, uh, I don't know, but it also kind of reminds me a little bit of the alignment system and how that's kind of broken up in systems like D&D. Okay, I, I only played D&D once, twice, so I'm not entirely familiar with the system. Um, but yeah, so in any case, back to well, our original yeah. topic of the time, 12 2 hours period. Uh, I was saying that a lot of translators do get that wrong. They tend to... So the word for the 2 hour periods is known as 时辰, which a lot of translators mistranslate as 1 hour rather than 2 hours without realizing it. Ah, oh, okay. And... Yeah, uh, even edited. I've never, I've never realized that. Yeah, you know Chinese units. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And that aside, uh, most readers won't know it unless we refuse to translate the word and leave it in its pinging, the phonetics. Right. So, personally, I just. Put localize and put it in hours because that's really no point in leaving it as that it's just going to serve to confuse readers well right and and we want 
readers to be able to relate enough, especially with how new... Not, it's not even good. Cultivation as a genre is new to the West. It really isn't. We've seen these basic ideas, honestly, in a lot of anime and a lot of... Uh, even in some uh, light or lit RPGs. Um... And, and light novels. I still, for anyone who is unfamiliar with cultivation, if you have seen Dragon Ball, you know enough to be able to understand a cultivation novel. Uh, <laughs> it's not the same thing. It's not the same but, thing. There's a lot of differences. Close. But, I mean, essentially, it's the whole idea of getting stronger and levering up. There's more so, spirituality in cultivation. From what I can tell, a lot more spirituality in cultivation. And, yeah, because cultivation uh, A lot is, of it has to do with your physical health. Cultivation, essentially, at its very roots, is based in religion. And it also has its foundations in cultivating immortality. You, you'll find that the Chinese have been obsessed with being immortal. Um, I'm not sure <laughs> how true this what story is, okay? But legend has it that this is how Japan started. Uh, I do not know how true this is. I think a lot of Japanese might disagree with me. If <laughs> okay, I'm just going to put a disclaimer out there. This is just one of the legends that I'm aware of, alright? So, mm -hmm. Ching Su Huang, have you heard of him? No. Okay, he's the first emperor of the Qing dynasty, the dude who built the Great Wall of China. Okay, yeah. So pronunciation known as throws me off, unfortunately, because Qing Shi Huang? Uh, in the West, in world, we pronounce everything wrong. Yeah. Okay, so the name, that's not his actual name, actually, but it actually just means the, the first emperor of Qing. Okay. Of course, that was the name he adopted as emperor. Yeah. But, oh, I mean, so, if you can, do. <laughs> yeah, so the <laughs> idea behind this is that he was so obsessed with immortality that... Okay, I I think I'm getting this right. I think it is this emperor. It might be another emperor, but I think it was this one. Uh, as you can tell, I haven't exactly read up before, before the stream. Um, but yeah, this emperor... Uh, after a certain point of time, he started to worry about his mortality and that he would die. So he decided to uh, send out people to find a magical potion of immortality. Okay. So I believe he sent out, what, 40, 40 people or 40 couples, something like that. And because they couldn't find this portion of immortality, they did not dare to return because um, the Qing Emperor was um, a great tyrant. If they come back with failure, if they're just going to get executed. So Ooh. they settled down don't, don't somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So basically, if, you know, don't go back. And these people apparently are what started Japan. Oh, okay. That actually is, I find it kind of interesting because uh, the Spanish and their obsession with the Fountain of Youth, um, which was ah. actually how Florida and the southeastern United States and um, southern North America, Central America, a lot of that was colonized because of the search for the Fountain of Youth. Which doesn't exist, by the way, in case you're curious. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's definitely not in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not in Florida. <laughs> well, given from um, what we have of the uh, King Arthur legends... Oh, yeah, and then there's that. <laughs> definitely not in Florida. Like, it doesn't sound like they crossed the sea to get to there. Now, are you well? Are you thinking of the Fountain of Youth, or are you thinking of, of the Holy Grail? Fountain of Youth, I think. I don't remember if 
There, I don't remember the legend with King Arthur and the Fountain of Youth. Hmm. Uh, but I might be getting my legend. I could. Mixed I also, up. I also haven't read that in a very I read the stories of King Arthur in a very very long time. Uh, but the the search for the Fountain of Youth was an actual documented historical search. Uh, fortunately, that led to a very 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 bad time for all of the natives in just just everyone it was just a bad time for everyone <laughs> um yeah the conquistadors were not kind they did find coffee however and chocolate coffee so, excellent yeah coffee <laughs> maybe that chocolate. is the fountain of youth <laughs> That's well, I, I do call it the elixir of life. Mm. Coffee, that is. <laughs> Which yeah, is, but... I thought most, I thought most uh, in that area that there's actually like teas that are even stronger than, than coffee as far as caffeine content. There are. I mean, everything is stronger when you compare it against decaf. Oh. How do you burn decaf that bad? I don't think Starbucks can even do that much. Ah, so it Ooh. is the Holy Grail then. Yeah, Silver says the Fountain of Youth okay. is supposed to have originated from the Holy Grail in the Arthurian legends. So I think it's actually quite thank interesting you, how... <laughs> yeah, thank you. I think it's quite interesting how mankind has always been in the pursuit of immortality. Uh, it's not just the Chinese, but also the... No. Yeah. It's everybody. It's everybody. The, the, and... I, the, the innate human fear of death, I think, is one one thing we can all agree on is pretty universal. Although, that's not necessarily true because there are a lot of uh, tribal cultures that don't actually fear death in the way. It's, it's more the developed, the faster developed cultures, I suppose. Well... I mean, if you look no, at it, I, certain... I appreciate your input, Silver. Thank oh, you. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, like religions are often also an attempt to answer what happens after death and probably an assurance right. for. Yeah, I mean, okay. Personally, I'm a Christian, and I will say that I'm pretty fervent one. Uh, I won't bring out a debate about what religion is true and not, but Christianity at its base, if you look at it, uh, also has a lot of talk about eternal life cause you know the fruit right. of life things like that yeah and then right. for the Chinese religions this is where the interesting one comes in Buddhism has this idea that nothing exists that everything is just an illusion and once you come to that realization you achieve a state of nirvana which takes you out of this cycle of reincarnation and you live forever. I just wanna wanna kind of put this out there right now and, and make sure that my understanding is correct. In Buddhism, there is not necessarily a god, correct? The initial Your Buddhism self is the divine. Yeah, in the initial Buddhism that is the case. In fact, the Lord Buddha, which was that Indian prince, uh, the mm -hmm. Gautama, I can't pronounce his name. Uh, the reason why I remember Gautama is because it was in IMDC. Uh, it's because it's one of the <laughs> very common uh, usage of, for, you know, huh. technique names. But, uh, so he's this Indian prince that kind of like gained enlightenment and started the whole movement. Yes, Buddhism is an Indian religion. Yes. That's Actually, there's a wonderful... For anyone who is interested, who is watching, there is a wonderful um, uh, movie. I believe it's called The Little Buddha that actually explains Buddhism and the history of how Buddhism developed and that philosophy very, very well. It's an older movie. I don't know where you can find it streaming, but if you have a chance to check it out, it is a very interesting and 
honestly, weirdly, wonderfully peaceful that movie to watch. Uh, actually, could you give us a little more? So, since you watched a movie, how about you tell us more of what you understand of Buddhism from that movie? Oh, and, well, uh, and I also have a little bit of an unfair advantage. I, I spent um, a couple of years of my childhood in Hawaii where Buddhism is also pretty prevalent. Um, oh, that's so I have a little bit of pre-exposure to that. Uh, but this movie follows essentially um, the llama is about to pass or the llama has passed and they are searching for the llama's reincarnation and they find a young boy i believe in new york who is exhibiting the traits and the spiritual memory for lack of better term and it goes through his journey of learning what Buddhism is and having the choice of whether or not he wants to be trained again to be the Lama, if that makes sense. Uh, what I understand of it is it's a philosophy of how to live your life in a peaceful and respectful way uh, and in harmony with your environment and everyone and everything you interact with um, to leave the world a better place and you continue on this journey of enlightenment to be able to think outside of the self and outside of the self's needs. Okay, um, so that is more of what Buddhism has sort of evolved to, of course, the based on what you have known, or through the movie, through Hawaii, this is what some of the modern Buddhism teaching. And before I go into that, I have problems completing this quest somehow. The lookout so quest. You have <laughs> go to this spot. I am at the spot. I am next to you, and in type fact. Slash lookout. I've done that six you times. To, you have to be on the light, on the little light that's on the ground. Yep, you have to be standing on it exactly. That uh, is... But I do understand that there are uh, different levels of, evo of not evolution, of uh, reincarnation. And depending on how you live your life depends on how close to Nirvana you will get in your next life. So that is... I do believe it has some kind of, uh, not philosophies, but beliefs from that have been a little bit pulled from the kind of the caste system and from um, Hinduism. It does. Correct? And uh, Phantom came in and said hello and hi. So we are discussing hey, a Phantom. little on religion. Hey. Although we are getting back to family because uh, we haven't exhausted that topic yet. <laughs> Trust me, there's I still a lot more to it. I have I have to go. Sure. So I'm back in New Gridania, but I will be hopefully back for the full session starting next week. Okay. We'll see how well, the we'll move goes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I mean, take so your time. So for you. Uh, so now Buddhism. Uh, Buddhism started initially as a philosophy, uh, rather than a religion. It was more about how to live your life, and the fact that nothing truly existed, and nirvana is not a state of what about what you do, but more about. Uh, okay, I I know what a lot of modern Buddhists. A lot of modern Buddhists might, might disagree with what I say because the religion has evolved over time. Uh, but I believe it also depends because there are many different kinds of Buddhism out there in the world and there are some that still stick to the very initial base belief of understand of enlightenment. So uh, enlightenment is about the realization that Nothing exists and it's all an illusion. Suffering is just an illusion. Joy, pleasure is all an illusion. And the state of Nirvana is being able to come to a true realization, not just in terms of knowledge, but a full acceptance of this fact 
it's more of on a deeper spiritual level of understanding that nothing exists and have you watched the matrix so, it's quite old yes so remember uh, it the... also kind of reminds me of anyone if anyone's played uh morrowind uh elder scrolls morrowind um there is a religious concept in that series about the godhead and transcending through the dream which i think is actually has some similar notes to it Potentially. but yes the matrix yeah, so there's this scene where Neo first visits the Oracle and mm -hmm. the kid, then he asks the kid around there how are they bending the spoon and things like that and they go, it does not exist. The spoon does not exist. And then yep. after coming to the whole realization, like he knew it mentally because you know he knew that he had to be plugged in with a computer program and all. But it took him but a while to... it's a matter of accepting it as truth. Yeah, and it's not just it, that, because it's quite easy for Neil to accept it as true, given that he comes from outside the Matrix, yeah? Mm hmm So, yeah, but it's along the whole same idea that the things are not true, and once you come to that realization on the spiritual level, you pull yourself out of reincarnation. Oh, so it's about escaping the cycle of reincarnation. Yep. Ah. Well, okay, so what is the belief of the reason behind our reincarnation? This, I am not sure, but I believe it originates from the caste system. So. Okay, right, because the, the, the concept of reincarnation with the caste system, um, you reincarnate as essentially more privileged depending on whether or not you've lived a good life and have been obedient and there's a lot more to it and I don't mean any disrespect if I'm getting any of this wrong I am sorry uh, this this our stream is about learning and understanding so please forgive me and if you have some you know want to put your add your input please do but uh, the Hinduism and, and that concept that's a huge part of it isn't it and that was a huge part for a very, very long time of Indian culture. I am not entirely sure of Hinduism. I do understand a little about it, but that is, I would not say that I'm an expert on Hinduism. Uh, you know, during my uni days, Fair. I have studied with a lot of Indians from India. Um, mm -hmm. And some of them are Hindus, and I actually asked about some of their religion before, but I wouldn't say I have a comprehensive understanding. Uh, so, uh, continuing on on Buddhism first, uh, karma. Yes. I'm sure this concept has been broached very frequently in cultivation novels. Karma. Yeah. So, people tend to see, let's look at a modern understanding of karma, where, you know, you basically suffer a retribution for what you do, but most people mm -hmm. understanding, understand it as within the same life. Uh, by, you know, you did something wrong, something bad happens to you, they say, oh, that's bad karma. And that's not really the concept of karma, but more of, if you can consider karma as a score. Oh, oh sorry, I got distracted by this axolotl. <laughs> that's right over here. And I won one. Oh! Excellent. So for those of you who do not know, Hosted Novel's uh, logo is an axolotl. So that's that. Yes, it is. I forgot that there was a uh, axolotl pet in yeah. Final Fantasy. I should have thought of that. Okay, so... I don't uh, have the skill to get one. <laughs> <laughs> Karma is a concept of uh, a score. A score of morality. Plus and minus, basically, of course, you know, binary, as with a lot of things. Uh, right. And it's kind of like the score you have in your life, and the whole overall score affects your next life. And that right. way, if you what build up karma a lot is of for. Negative karma, you end up reincarnating as a cockroach. Yep. Well, if you have a lot of nice, positive actually. karma, well. It was an, exa an exaggerated example. <laughs> no, being cockroach is nice. Trust me. 
Like, there are worse things than cockroaches. I'm afraid to ask, and I'm not sure I want to know. Uh, no, okay. It's not. If, 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 Me if, and cockroaches, we have a, a lifetime vendetta against each other. <laughs> okay, so the whole idea of cockroaches is you are down the path of the, the reincarnation path of a beast. That is, I believe, only the. Oh, the sixth path. I believe that is the fourth path. So you have your Ashura. Wait, six? Yeah, sixth path. Okay. Yeah, I can't remember the exact path, but like some of them you become. Uh, you get tortured in hell or something. Uh, oh, I can't man. recall exactly, yeah. Uh, okay, before I continue, what are you doing now? I am in a cutscene. Okay, I am going I to. I am talking to Menphilia. Oh, you're ahead of me. I'm, I'm traveling to Horizon. Speak to Tataru. Catch up. Oh no! Wait, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, you are. I'm a little bit ahead of you. Vesper you Bay, gotta yeah? speak to top. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta speak to Tataru, and then you'll speak to Minfilia. Yeah, kind of got. Wasn't sure what to do there and progress, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, there, there's. Well, do we want to continue with? Uh, with talking about kind of because we're getting a little bit off topic I think I, I think mean, we should okay. kind of bring we it back so we can talk we can talk about more and go into more depth with how families are represented uh, and kind of go back to that subject a little bit or how Buddhism plays a, f and a factor in cultivation oh, okay. we can stick on the family topic for now since that was what we pretty much announced uh Right, right. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> no, it's all right. I mean, it's all educational anyway. So, family. So, the mm -hmm. Chinese are very particular about family and seniority. This is something that baffles me a lot sometimes, even though I am Chinese. Um, yeah. So, now tell me, what are the terms you have in the Western world for family members? So we have, for our core family, mother, father. Um, as far as children, it's usually, you know, the first children and then grandchildren, great-grandchildren. For parents of the mother, father, we have grandparents, uh, grandmother, grandfather, and then, of course, great-grandparents. And you just keep adding greats on. All right, for the aunts, different uncle. <laughs> uh, oh, yes, aunts, uncles, um nieces and nephews so your aunts and uncles children will be nieces and nephews as far as relation to you um, you'll no i did this wrong hold on aunts and uncles their children would be your cousins yeah your siblings children would be nieces and nephews uh the further out relations of cousins go so your cousins son or daughter would be a first or your cousin would be first cousin cousins uh oh man okay let me help it you with this one uh, this, I how, looked this one up before <laughs> I looked up this one before okay so uh ooh cuts in okay so uh the cousin of your cousin is your first your was it second cousin so Wait. first cousin is the normal one. I'm trying to think because my my mother's cousin becomes my second, my first cousin, second so cousin. So your first cousin and is your mo first cousin, yeah. Yeah, my first cousin is my first cousin. My mom's cousin is my second cousin. Their son or daughter is, I think, my third cousin. No, not according to what I, I found. I have a small family. So, okay, according <laughs> to what I family, found, sure. it should be something along this idea. Okay, I may be slightly off on the generational thing, but it's like that. So, your cousin is your first cousin. Mm -hmm. The cousin of right. your cousin is your second cousin. The cousin of your cousin of your cousin is your third cousin. Okay, so now, let's take one step back. So, your cousin, okay, your cousin's mom right. is your aunt. 
Your right. second cousin's mum is your, is your first, first cousin. cousin once removed. Yeah. And the <laughs> son of your second cousin is also your first cousin once removed. So, My... if you go further out, your third cousin's mum is your second cousin once removed, and the mum of that person will be your first cousin twice removed. Well, and see, we also have... The way that we treat families when we and especially extended family when we start getting out that far is a little bit different in the west as well there are some families that stay really close despite how large they are and they will they will actually refer to themselves as um clans or tribes um for a lot of people though we don't keep in contact once we kind of get past first or second cousin it is kind of tough, I do agree, especially when you guys are scattered all over the place. Yeah, and we do scatter. Um, but if anyone has any input too on, on your families and how many cousins you have, feel free to type in, because I've got a very small family. My husband's family is actually large enough that it's a little overwhelming for me. <laughs> so, yes, <laughs> lots of cousins. So how do, how do the Chinese deal... Or, or deal with? How did the Chinese view this uh, okay. cousinial tree? As far tree? as cousins go, okay, so I would say we are similar to the Western world in this aspect. Of course, you know, if you stay in a clan, then yes, there's a good chance you know your fifth cousin down the line somewhere. Um, but you also yeah. get, like, in cultivation novels, how you don't know people of your own clan. Right. And you know how things are competitive yeah. and things like that. They don't feel like a family, more like a, more like some kind of uh, organization. So, yeah, they may be staying together, but it's not necessary that you literally know everyone. I mean, it makes sense, right? If you are as large as a village or a town, you don't know everyone in the it, village. It's like the way we, you know, I, right. Yeah. Well, and there's a a lot of points. Um, we're here that we won't actually know that we're related at all. I could have met my fifth cousin and had absolutely no idea that we were related. Um, because again, last names also start changing pretty drastically, pretty quickly. Yep. Uh, okay, so with the clan system, that is where the advantages go. Because uh, last right. names stay the same. Because, you know, remember, if you are female, you the marry daughters out. daughters leave the family. Yep. Yep. So when you marry out, uh, yep, your last name changes, but you're not with the clan anymore in the first place. So everyone within the clan has the same family name. Oh, man. At least that makes it a little bit easier. And you can kind of recognize, even if you don't know the person, you can recognize whether or not you are related. So that is where it's still one... Kind of I don't know. Yeah, it's that's one reason different. why the the Chinese avoid marrying people of the same family name, cause you know they might be, um, they might be cousins, right? I think we can all agree that incest is not best. We do not like that. It doesn't work well. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Okay. Medical so. Consequences. Uh. In terms of Chinese cousins, okay, maybe I might not be as well understanding on this entirely but okay uh it is possible that you know the cousins of your cousins i actually okay. do know the cousins of my cousins my second cousins um yeah yeah how close are you mm, not really it's more my mom that is closer okay. uh, so you know but you don't necessarily... It doesn't necessarily mean that you would have a close relationship with them. You just kind of... You know who they are. They show up to family functions. That kind yeah, of thing. That kind of thing. Um, yeah. So, cousins aside, actually, the part I want to point out more of is seniority and familiar relationships are very specific in how we address people. So, um, okay. Okay. Out of curiosity, what do you address your dad as? Dad. 
Okay. Or see, oh well, okay. So there's another aspect to our culture when it comes to families that we did not explain. Uh, divorce is a common factor in American families. Um, you likely know somebody who's either been divorced or somebody who has divorced parents and remarrying happens pretty frequently. My parents, uh, I don't actually, my father passed away when I was 18 and I actually did not have any contact with my father. My mother remarried and my stepdad is who kind of raised me as and was my father figure and he's still my stepdad he's still married to my mom so i because i grew up with him being a part of my life before he got married i will occasionally refer to him by his first name but i also call him dad Okay, so what about a normal family? Uh, okay, it's, it's like so a normal family would be dad. Okay, so f what I heard, I do not know how true, is that once, for some family, once the kid reaches a certain certain age, they switch from calling addressing the father as dad or father to their first name. How true is that? At least in, at least in my experience, not very. Most of the people that I know, uh, it's still, it's hard to explain because I don't know that it's necessarily a conscious societal construct, but a lot of the people I know who, um, still have, like, still have their, their birth biological father will call him dad until the day he passes and after. I don't actually know a whole lot of people who refer to their father as by their first name. Okay. Uh, well, or their mother. To be fair, Unless I it's, can... Uh, you know, drama. <laughs> <laughs> I, can see, I can see why it makes uh, sense to continue calling dad. Because, you know, you're yeah, just used to it. It's also kind of a sign of disrespect in the West. Okay, so you must say... At least in the, in the says... West from the people I know. So it, if I... Uh, if my, you know, I had my original father in the picture and I called him or let's go with my mother for this example, because that's a little bit easier for me. If I called my mm -hmm. mother by her, her actual given name, um, words would be had because <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's kind of an automatic sign of disrespect. Oh, silver has input. Yep. Uh, you yeah, frequently uh, yeah, see... we'll see more like. Hang on, other, let me read this out. Other cousins. Let me read this out. Okay, so you frequently see mm -hmm. or meeting titles like aunt and, or uncle and as they get older, but we'll call, keep calling parents mom or dad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and if there are multiple aunts or uncles, you'll call them Aunt Lucy or Uncle Bob. You'll call them by their first name to specify which aunt or uncle you're speaking of or speaking to. Or and grandparents too, actually. But yeah, mom and dad pretty much stay mom and dad. Yeah. So, uh. Okay. So in Chinese culture, this is a complete no, even if it's a stepdad, stepfather, mm -hmm. you know, titles still remain clear cut father mother that's why you see in cultivation novels you see um the capitalization of father and mother as a term of address very very frequently but on top of that uh we have different words for siblings and cousins like mm -hmm. different kinds per se brother is the main word in english yeah but right. in chinese we have a different word for elder brother and younger brother well and in chinese you'll actually refer to your siblings as brother or elder brother you don't necessarily just refer to them by their given name is that correct that is correct and i can confirm that this is still common even until today my cousins address each other as like you know big sister uh big being first like first sister second sister 
So, of course, I think due to modernization, this tends to be a little more common going upwards. So the younger sibling will address the older sibling by the title, uh, aka the name. Uh, not the name, the, the, the mm-hmm. you know, like, you know, Old, first older sister. Older brother, elder brother, first brother, right. Uh, but I think it's not as common to see the older sibling addressing the younger sibling by name. Uh, yeah, they, they address them by name. It's more, more common to see that. one thing editing cultivation novels as well that the terms uh big brother or little brother big sister little sister are not necessarily exclusive to blood relation oh, they yeah. seem to also be used as almost a um a term of endearment for somebody who's relatively closer somebody who's younger or older not in only way. that but also when you see someone as a comrade or thought so like mm-hmm. Sometimes you see a fellow cultivator, you could technically call them brother because you guys are kind of brothers in this. It's like, you know how in, in the army, brothers, your right. fellow soldiers, they are brothers in arms. Yeah, so it's kind yes. of the same concept. And okay. uh, It seems a lot more common though than than um, necessarily what we, we do in the West have a concept for siblings for um, individuals who have crossed the threshold of friend, or like, this is going, let me try to re-explain this, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so, um, there are different levels with people that you are not related to of how well you know them. So, if you know somebody and you're on terms where um, you can kind of just chit chat, but you don't really get into any like serious conversation or divulging any serious information. You, they will be a acquaintance. From there, the closer they get to you, there are different terms. So you have your acquaintances, you have your friends, you have you know of course your best friends, and then it kind of goes further. And and especially with uh, the. We don't view families as necessary, not everybody, but there are, there is a concept in our culture where we don't view families as necessarily requiring that we have close relationships. So in our culture here, we will form those kind of familial relationships with people whom we are not blood related to, but we have grown very close to or have a long history with. So... Uh, as an example, I have uh, friends who are, are close enough with me, or close enough to me, that I consider them sisters. Although we don't always refer to each other as sister, we don't actually use the term when speaking with each other or necessarily referring to each other. We do to explain our closeness in relationship. Um, (laughs) yeah, yeah. Silver (laughs) is a good example. She is what I consider one of my sisters. We have a long history together. For context, for those of you who cannot see this, Silver posted a couple of emojis of hugging and hugs. (laughs) Uh, So we actually have this concept of almost sort of a, a pack mentality where we will build familial relationships without having to be blood related. Um, which I see is very similar to uh, a a lot of the kind of companionships that we see in cultivation novels. The one that we are working on that has yet to be released, but will be soon. Um, I'll give it a week. Cough promotion. I'm going to (laughs) start slow posting because our progress is a little too slow and I don't want to just keep living in in its current status before someone actually picks it up and... All the effort goes to not. Yeah, we don't we want to avoid that. Uh, so hopefully we will be out here in the next week or so. But uh, there are two characters who consider themselves sworn brothers. And we'll actually refer to each other as brother, sworn brother, or big brother. And it is capitalized as it is an official term for their culture. Yep. But I think it so is... We- uh... I think the concept is also, like like you say, it's there in the Western society, but it's just mm-hmm. 
titles aren't as important in the Western culture, whereas right. the Chinese and not just Chinese culture, Japanese as well. Uh, I can't speak for Koreans, yeah. but I think probably uh, across the board. So you know how the Japanese, you have your Nissan, your uh, yeah, with and all your yep. Onisan, Onisan. Yep. So it's the same concept. Although I think the Japanese mm-hmm. takes this even further than the Chinese. I believe they do. So they do have different forms of their their terms for brother and sister, and and it kind of expands depending on the the again the age relationship for the most part, from what I can tell. Not but just it is, that. It's, but like even Western to strangers, culture, I think it's just a little bit more informal on that concept, and I think that's really the major difference. It is, yeah. Uh, it's not just that the Japanese also adds the uh, suffix of the son to anyone they do not know, but I don't think the Chinese right. will do that. Really? Yeah. That's an interesting difference. Okay. So that is that one. So okay, that is brothers sisters by blood relationship as well as uh, through friendship. Now let's talk a little about cousins and uncles and aunts. We also have different words for uncle and aunts of different side of the family as well as cousins. And informal relationships as well too, right? I actually, I, I don't know if this is this is the case, but growing up, uh, spending a couple of years as a child in Hawaii, any of whether they were Chinese or Japanese, any of my mother's friends, I refer to as auntie or uncle or any older um, member of society, what I refer to as auntie or uncle, as almost a term of respect, but also yes. kind of an informal um, sign of being comfortable with that individual, correct? Yeah, that is correct. Of course, is that the same in Chinese culture as well? It, that does stem from Chinese culture, actually. Um, oh, I, okay. Not sure if the Japanese do that. Let me think. Yeah, I think the Japanese do that too. So it could also have, but uh, it's I was strong. never sure because it's it's the common thing in Hawaii. So well, whether you're talking to somebody who's Hawaiian, who is Polynesian, Samoan, Chinese, Japanese, it doesn't matter. That's how you refer to them. I do know that Hawaii is highly populated by Asians. Yes. So, uh, yeah, but the, the term for um, aunts in uncle in Chinese, the informal one, I believe one of mm-hmm. the common terms for aunts with the informal one is ai, which translates to aunt. Um, okay. That one is a little different. Uh, then uncle could be shushu. Okay, okay, which this one is a little more tricky, okay. Uh, but the idea is I think the word is slightly different and but they might actually stem from the same word as the familiar ones. So for familiar, like for... Okay, I'll be honest, this one I'm going to mess this up for sure because it's been very long time since I use it. Okay. Um, let me think for a bit. Okay. The un on the father's side is known as Gugu. The un from the mother's side is known as... Let me think. I think it uses... It's the IE word, so it's the, it's the same as the one as the non-familiar one. Okay. Which would make sense when your mother would have left her that family to officially join your father's family. Yep, and there are also more words than just that, but I that I could just you. be variations. Uh oh there you are. <laughs> so we are the same um okay. Yes. <laughs> then uncle uh, will be Wop Wop for father's side and Shu Shu for the mom's side, I believe. And again, there are okay. more variations than just the two. Um, 
Okay, the reason why I'm hesitating a lot on this. Okay, so here's another thing. Chinese, China is huge. And I'm sure you're familiar right. with the concept of dialects. Yes, absolutely. So the Chinese <laughs> we speak in Singapore and the Chinese that most people are aware of is Mandarin, which is the official dialect of China. Okay. And the other common one, because of Hollywood and movies, is Cantonese and food, right. of course. So these are the two very common dialects out in the world. In Singapore... Wait, wait, uh, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got a question. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. So the terms that we know for different Chinese dishes, which are, for anyone watching, definitely not the traditional recipes. But, um... Those I assure you, we do not have tangerine <laughs> chicken. <laughs> yeah, sorry, your uh, question before those, that? Those, those uh, are Cantonese. Mm, maybe. Is that correct? I wouldn't know. Maybe. I have never seen those before, okay. so I wouldn't know what they're called. <laughs> uh, well, like, uh, bao buns. They are called uh, bao. I'm probably mispronouncing it. I think Steam this word before. happens to be common for both Cantonese and Mandarin. Okay, so uh, it's okay. not exactly <laughs> correct this way, but the dialects in Singapore, uh, not Singapore, in China, are mm -hmm. essentially mostly you can read from the same script, but just pronounce differently. Of oh, course, there, okay. there may be further variations, but it's possible to read from the same script with the correct meaning and different pronunciation. So, what are the main... Because there's there's more than one main script, correct? Uh, okay, so right now, China is using simplified Chinese. Prior to mm. that, they were using traditional Chinese, which Hong Kong... Macau and Taiwan are still using. Uh, I shall not get into the politics of this. I think that is just asking for disaster. Um, but nope. traditional Chinese and prior to traditional Chinese, they have even more traditional scripts. Um, basically, the idea is Chinese words are pictograms okay, and they evolve into simpler forms over time. And the current modern script is that most of the world uses is actually the simplified Chinese script. But it is traditional script and simplified script are similar enough that a person proficient in a language or at least a native user of the language would be able to mm -hmm. understand albeit with some difficulties here and there but the words are similar enough that you can probably guess that this is the this is the word. And we actually, we took a look at this the other day, or he, he rather, Dragon helped me take a look at this the other day. And it's interesting because once you get an idea of what the character means, um, it's actually still very pictograph. And, and you can actually start to kind of pick up on different words just by seeing the image in the characters. Um, I have actually recently picked up, I'm trying to learn Chinese myself, simplified Chinese, um, you know, due to the job, of course, but Makes sense. one of the words that I have recently learned, uh, and has very much stuck in my memory since I saw it, is the word for mouth, ah, which yeah. is a big, it's a big open square, <laughs> uh, but when you start to describe concepts you start to add on to the pictograph correct yep and most of of course uh pictograph only goes so far a lot of things are right. actually complex ideas that are formed by combining pictograph together right and i don't mean i and don't mean it where... as separate characters and i mean it as uh one word one character so, if we were to take the example of, um, I mean, Mouth? no, I need something more complex. Uh, oh, uh, boat? Uh, do you need something abstract? 
Uh, Somebody give us an idea of a word. Do all Chinese dialects use the same phonic alphabet? That's no. a good question, actually. No. Nope. Okay, here's the strange thing about... Mountain top! We have a word. Mountain top. Uh, nope, that's, uh, Thank that's you, two Silver. characters. Uh, mountain, then. Mountain is one character. Yeah, and top is another character. Uh, okay, off my mind for some reason, I'm blanking out a little. But uh, <laughs> the idea is that you can combine two characters in a way to become one character to form another word. What about soldier? I did notice that soldier includes, if I can remember correctly, and I might not remember correctly, but if, if I do, soldier includes the symbol for man, correct? Uh, not the ones that I can think of. Oh, well, never mind then. There that goes. Okay, so, I like, tried. certain words, like, for example, just to give you an idea. Oh, oh, okay, here. Um, fire. Uh, okay. So, fire. Okay. Uh, how am I going to show this on stream? Can you type it into the chat? Okay, yep. Yeah, so, this is going to become a chat exclusive. Okay. This is fire. Okay. Actually, you know what? I don't have a way of putting it in this. It's going to be tiny for most of you. But this is fire. Um, at the bottom here. At the very it bottom. Looks like, okay. It's uh, like sparks. Okay. So, it looks like a fire. Yep. And let's see. This is smoke. Um, whoops. Let me get this. That's it. And this is smoke. Do you see how fire, fire plays into here? In the... It it's the symbol next to the yeah. box. Yep. So this has With an indication that box. this has an indication that at its roots. This word has something to do with fire. I can learn Chinese. Yeah, actually, let me. Does it show cool. it this way? It does show. So, Thank okay. You, for those of you on stream, um, you can see this is how we type Chinese characters. We type the. Uh, eh. Uh, settings icon next to chat button oh that's in the okay yeah but this is how we type chinese characters we type the phonetics and then we select from the number oh, okay so you don't actually need a different type of keyboard nope we use is the there a standard different type keyboard, keyboard? there are oh, and cool. but i do not know how to use those those types by um, <laughs> the strokes, which no one uses and practically no one knows how to use, except for certain bit. Maybe uh, Taiwan might know, but not not so much now. Oh, here's another idea, uh, another in, in, in another character. Okay, so this is the word for daughter, uh, for for female. Sorry. Um. All right. It's in both. Um, the chat, okay. and I put it inside I here. I recognize that. Okay, so now, here's the word for mother. Okay. Uh, oddly enough. So what is, what is the other part of the character? What is the meaning of that part of the character? Could I split this into two separate... <laughs> concepts <laughs> you can but uh for some reason this word doesn't want to appear in it doesn't want to appear you in, can in... but not not with this word <laughs> yeah so what about smoke would uh, you be able to split those two into different concepts 
yeah. the two symbols okay. that are... Okay, so smoke, okay. the word, the, the character on the right is ing, which is cause. So, cause oh, by fire. Oh, so it, it... So kind of the literal translation is fire cough. Cause, as in C-A-U-S. Oh, okay. Okay, now, cough. um... Okay. The mother one is strange. Because the other word is horse. H O R S E. Before you Wait. hear the wrong word. Okay. Is that due to the nagging? That's a terrible joke. Don't Wait, yell at uh, me. Horses nag? <laughs> like horse as the like a horse voice? Or like the animal horse? Animal horse. Wait. So female horse. How do you type female horse then? Uh, as two separate characters. Oh, okay. <laughs> why oh. is why is mother called a female horse? I'm I don't know. They call the word. I just call, <laughs> they call the language evolve. I don't know why. <laughs> I have no idea why, but you get the idea of how. We do not is. have all the answers. <laughs> Yeah, yeah that, and it's interesting how it builds on each other, and then of course you put uh, these these combination characters next to each other, and that's how you kind of start building on top of the concepts. A lot of the concepts that I've seen um, in editing, like Foot Soldier, is actually a series of two or three different characters depending on the context. Yep. That is why trans, uh, MTL doesn't work very well because Chinese also functions on phrases where you can combine two words of different meanings to form not not one character but one phrase that means something different from these individual oh, characters. Dragon Turtle Town Water Pile. Uh, that, that, that <laughs> one. I haven't looked at that one yet. That was the title, right? I took a look last night and I said, nope, I'm off to sleep. <laughs> I I completely understand. Um, it, uh, so actually, question, water pile. Does, is water pile the concept for waterfall? Or is waterfall a completely different thing? Uh, I have to know. I have to see the word itself, but I don't want to open the document up now because that means eating <laughs> yeah, computer yeah, resources. Yeah, because we're streaming. Uh... <laughs> But no, waterfall we will go is definitely more into not. Language later too. <laughs> waterfall definitely does not translate to water power, even individually. Excellent, good to know. Yeah, I didn't so it think is, it yeah. did. I was really confused. I think more of <laughs> Don't like. Don't read machine translation. It's not worth it, people. It's not worth it. You'll just be confused. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are some that are decent, but there's going to be issues with literal translations here and there. Even that, there's so... I've noticed that Chinese is a very idiom-heavy language. Oh, yes, um, it is. There's so many idioms, so many metaphors, so many similes. Uh, and, yeah, I can see how this would be difficult for some people to to really conceptualize without um, kind of honestly being able to have that bridge between cultures. That's a huge factor I've seen in my experience in this industry is that because the language is so heavy on these these concepts, you really it's really hard to understand uh even especially when you're you know reading a machine translation because even if it it does translate right you're going to get an idiom that you are not at all familiar with um and that makes a huge difference yeah it does and i honestly one of the worst things for machine translations is that the uh authors of novels don't often have an editor or well, web novels at least they, yeah, they didn't often oh. have an editor and that results in typos that you may or may not understand. But with machine translations, they are sure not going to get it. Right. Yeah, so like, because... A lot of ancient languages, yeah, a lot of... <laughs> 
there are some there's stuff, definitely some interesting things that I've come across working with I've worked with a, a wide variety of translators and every having that human touch is very very important um, but every translator is a little bit different um, especially once you get through the editing phase but there are definitely some of those idioms that I've run across and Dragon can attest I've had to ask him <laughs> what is this supposed to mean? What 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 is this? Because... Wait till we get into euphemisms. <sighs> yeah. You will get quite a um, few. But they are absolutely important to understanding what the story is trying to tell you. And we actually, it's interesting because sometimes in English we'll have one or two words that envelop that concept. Um, other times we'll have three or four sentences that are explaining a concept that comes across with, you know, with uh, even four or five Chinese characters. But this is talk, we're talking shop now. I am, I apologize. We are supposed <laughs> to be talking about culture, not, sh not now, the uh, actual before, translating Now, before concept. going back to culture, I mean, maybe this is culture, but FF15, Yes. FF14 culture. So, I assume you just spoke to Hihibaru and he was talking about a uh, worship of uh, the god of destruction, re regular, regular, however you pronounce it. Um, so, it appears that it. that is the, Gadi the Galleon's deity and that happens to be the one my character worships. Really? Am, looks like I am Galleon after all. Yeah, see? <laughs> Ra... 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 How would you pronounce this? Ra... 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 Wearing yeah, a cat on your head. Yeah, wearing a cat hat on your head is definitely one that I have seen as well. I actually have what not seen this. What is wearing a cat on your... That I think more is a Japanese idiom. Maybe. But definitely not Chinese, or at least... Either that or I am just not familiar with it, which is possible. Japanese. It is, yeah, it is Japanese. What is a Chinese idiom that you have had editors have to come to you and ask about? Oh, uh, um... I want to say none. <laughs> I want to say I'm good none? enough that I get them. <laughs> that, okay, sometimes I oh. choose to literally translate idioms. Sometimes. But when mm -hmm. I do that, I always leave a translator note explaining the meaning of the idiom. Yeah, you've you've had some um, pretty demanding editors in the past, that's for sure. We like having notes already there, so we can do our job a little bit easier. Um, I mean, it's also I can't for think any readers off the top to of my head yeah. either. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, if your I, editor I, can understand it, they can make sure your reader understands it. I do make sure my um, readers and editors know what I'm talking about. So there may be a couple which I wasn't too sure of, but usually I do leave notes on. Too sure of, I think, I whether I've it translates seen... well into English. Right. Well, and I, I've seen, as far as some that we ne haven't necessarily had to kind of bridge the ah, cultural gap. Frog in the Well. Uh, Silver mentioned Frog oh, in the Well. Oh, Frog in the Well! Yes! Okay, Thank but you! That one this... drove me nuts! I hate that one! <laughs> What's the English equivalent of this? Uh, living under a rock. Ah. Close enough. Yes. Uh, okay, so... uh, at least from what I can tell, it's, it's from the first time that I, I saw Frog in the Well, uh, I was told that it's the concept of being like kind of away from society and not knowing what's going on being ignorant yeah so okay chinese idiom tends to stem from stories condensed now into four mm -hmm. words frog in the well is jing di zi wa which literally translates uh well bottoms frog okay literally of course so you know uh the frog at the bottom of the well. Um, so right. here's the story. So there was once a frog who grew up 
in a well. All this frog could see when he looked up was the sky, the circle hole, you know, because wells are usually circular mm. in our mind, but you know, the hole that showed right. the sky. And the yep. frog thought that that was the sky. One day oh. he finally came out, and then only the frog realized that the sky was so much vaster than, than what he ever knew. Ah, so it's it's more about realizing one's ignorance than simply uh, being. No, it's usually right? used as uh, youth scolding someone. Okay. It's more of a like you ignorant fool like kind of thing. Like small mindedness. Uh, or sorry? is it like uh, is it is it more along the lines of being small minded, or is it more along the lines of being naive? Uh. Hmm. Okay, it's more along the lines of. Mm, not rather it's more minded because I think I understand small minded as. <clears throat> Unwilling to accept new truth. Yes. Not so much that, but more That's of very being of arrogant it. with what little information you have. That's a lot closer, and still being nice about it. That's a lot closer, yes. Yeah. So, naive is... Um, I could actually look up the definition, but, you know, again, streaming... Naive is just naive unaware. Being unaware and inexperienced. Yep, especially of especially in the ways of how the world works. Not so much about yes. knowledge and information. So for those of you who don't know, English is actually my first language. Uh, Chinese happened to be the language I was forced to learn and hated a lot. And look at look at where I ended up <laughs> as. I mean, the irony of it. It's hilarious because every translator I've worked for hates Chinese. That's because every translator you work for were forced to learn Chinese. Which is interesting because uh, my previous translator, or uh, the translator I worked for, I suppose, the longest, um, he, did, he actually learned English by watching a lot of uh, sitcoms, western sitcoms and watching the English subtitles and English dub of anime. No, but the thing is he had to learn English in school as well. It's just he probably didn't have much of opportunity to use it. Okay, I think I should preface this by a little background about us. Okay, so firstly I am from Singapore. I'm Singaporean. I grew up in Singapore. Um... Singapore is an independent city state in the south, not south, in the no, equator, south of Malaysia. Okay. Our mm -hmm. primary language is English, and everyone has to learn their mother tongue, which in my case, I'm ethnically Chinese, so I have to learn Mandarin. And majority so of Singaporeans are Man the... Chinese. What is the. I guess, original language of Singapore. Ha! This is the interesting question. <laughs> okay, Malay is the original language, and that is ah. also our national language, which most of us cannot speak or read. Think of it like, okay. like Hawaii, you know, because not yep. many people can even speak Hawaiian. Actually... And uh, they do... I had to learn Hawaiian. Uh, don't ask me to speak it. Don't. I don't remember. Uh, and my accent is atrocious. Uh, that, that but, affects, but that how is many something true... that every, every student learns Hawaiian in elementary school. Every student. But that's just the basic, right? Once you move on, they isn't there anymore? Well, the main language spoken... On the islands is actually pigeon. Oh, okay. Which pigeon is, English? Yes, which is a combination of uh, Hawaiian, Polynesian, uh, Japanese, Chinese, and English. I think occasionally uh, Korean gets thrown in, but it's rarer. 
I believe the proper term for it is actually a Creole. Creole is is that wait for Korean? Really? No, that's interesting. Creole, I think Creole have... as in. Oh no, that's Pigeon a specific English. area. No, no, nope, no. Nope. Pigeon that's English. That's a specific area. Creole is very, very, very specific to uh, no, I'm not, Louisiana. I'm not. No, if I actually looked it up before, the definition of a Creole is a combination of language to form. Basically, you can have like Hawaiian Creole. Uh, you can have Madagascan Creole. Basically, as long as okay. it's, it's an... Uh, what's the better word for it? Well, in the United States, at least, when somebody says Creole, we are very specifically referring to uh, the common language in uh, Louisiana, in the Bayou, New Orleans, or New Orleans. And that... That dialect is specifically, I'm going to get this wrong. I know it's a combination of French, English, and Haitian. I could be wrong there. Okay, but... I actually dig out. Okay, so a Creole, according to Wikipedia, a Creole language, simply a Creole, is a stable okay. natural language that develops from the simplifying and mixing of different languages into one within a fairly brief period. Often, a pigeon evolved into a full-fledged language. Okay, so I suppose maybe pigeon pigeon English might be might be right then. It it's interesting because as we were talking about dialects and and the size of the nation, we have different dialects. Sometimes even for specific cities, um, New York actually has different dialects depending on where in New York City you're from. Uh, the Midwest has its own dialect. Um, some states have specific ones. Again, Louisiana, we, like I said, we usually refer to that as Creole. Uh, the Southeast has a very specific dialect. Even going in like the West, the Northwest, California versus Seattle on the West Coast. Um, and in large part because of Hawaii's history which they honestly absolutely enjoy that most white people especially white tourists come to can't understand huh. um <laughs> it's again if you know anything about Hawaiian history it's completely understandable but of course we also have our native dialects too um which differed between the different indigenous tribes I have come to understand and that there are not many native Hawaiians left out there. And I was told that yeah. anyone with any any bit of native Hawaiian blood in them gets full scholarship for schools. Yes. Yep. Um well not not necessarily full scholarship for all schools, but for the schools in Hawaii specifically. Um culture is very 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 important to native hawaiians and um i mean they've spent generations upon generations trying to do their very best to hold on to that and one of the, right now they're actually asking a lot of white people to not move there because space is so limited and unfortunately a lot of the natives are houseless it's a very sad situation and Pretty very sad. Oh, so yeah. in any case, uh, coming back to what I was explaining. Yes, so, sorry. <laughs> uh, in Singapore, we speak mostly English. And depending on household, actually, it really does depend. Uh, and right. we are mostly made up of Chinese. Our original natives are the Malay. We do have Malay. Our national language is Malay as recognition of that fact. Um, but barely anyone speaks it, except for the Malays. So... There is that one. So that is for us, um, for me specifically. English is a language that I grew up with, something I'm more comfortable with. Uh, I speak English at home and Chinese has always been a burden for me because I had I was forced to learn it. Granted, yes, I can speak it even before going to school, but um we have to study the Chinese language and English as well, of course. Mm -hmm. All the way up to 
junior college or high school for you guys? Oh. Yeah, with our Cambridge A levels, we take the Cambridge exams. So, do you speak Chinese with your family? Mm, um, or depends does on your how family you define, typically speak English? It depends on how you define Chinese and how you define family. <laughs> Immediate family, oh, okay. I use yeah. English. Okay. My parents speak to each other in the Hokkien dialect. What is the Hokkien dialect? It's Hokkien. It's, um, I believe in Mandarin is Fujian. Oh. Okay. So the Fujian dialect. Right, we were talking about how many different dialects there are in, in, in Chinese. Yep. So we got with my by written word. extended family... I speak Hakka. Okay. And okay, Hakka is an interesting one, but um, Hakka is actually my dialect group. Okay. And I'm sad to say that while I can speak it, I would not say I am very proficient at it. Can you give us an example? A kind of tough on the spot and it's been quite a while. Okay, so here's let me preface this. I did not start off as Singaporean. I started off as Malaysian. Yeah? Really? Yeah. My parents were Malaysian, okay. they migrated to Singapore. You know, you know, there's neighbors, easy to move around. So I see my extended family like once a year and thanks to COVID, not in two years. Right. So I it's know, been, borders have been really tight. It's been two years since I actually even used my Hakka and it's mostly with my grandparents that I use that. With my aunts and uncle I do tend to default to English. Okay. Or Mandarin, depending. Oh no, it's either English or Hakka. I actually don't even use Mandarin with them now I think about it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well I do use Mandarin uh, with some of my cousins. So this is where things differ in Malaysia a little. So with your previous translator, uh, well, one of your previous translator, I believe mm -hmm. that one was from Malaysia, grew up in Malaysia. Now this one, yes. it really does depend on the setting, but using a Chinese, speaking Chinese at home is something a little more common in Malaysia compared to Singapore. And having Chinese as a first language is a little more common in Malaysia than Singapore too. In general, I would say put it this way, uh, which is honestly, uh, okay, I'm not being, what's the word for this? Well, I can't say racist because we are the same race, but nation thief, whichever it is, okay? okay? But in general, I would say that Singapore's English is better, but Mandarin is not as good. Comparative to China, to, 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 to Malaysia, that is. And Malaysians, Chinese they've, are... They've had to study, right? Sorry? Based on what they've kind of had to study in school. Partly and also because of our mentality towards it. Um, for Malaysians, it tends to be the reverse where you have good Chinese but not as good English because they don't get to use English as frequently. And they do okay. study English. And of course... Um, it does vary it's not applicable to everyone because there are people there are Chinese there who don't learn Chinese and of course Malaysia is not mostly Chinese as well right they do have a strong population but it's not mostly Chinese yeah so yeah from what I understand it's kind of at least from talking to my previous translator there is uh, it's Sounds like it's fairly close, but it is pretty. Dis there is a pretty distinct split between the Chinese community and the Malaysian community in Malaysia. The Malay community, Malaysian being the nationality, Malay, Malay being the race. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. There so, is also uh, uh, some inherent displeasure with the government on due to racial issues as well because the policies of Malaysia are 
pro like basically pro Malay. Uh, where we you know um mm -hmm. put it simply they're racist. <laughs> All right, hey Prince Kaladin, he has just joined us. With, well, here, okay, so, hey Kaladin. Uh, so here's the thing, though, we are hitting that. Uh, for me, 10 p.m. mark. We have definitely hit our two-hour mark. So, why do you hate yourself? Don't hate yourself. That's sad. Don't do that. We like you here. We love yeah. you here. Join us. Um, but unfortunately, I do think we should wrap up here. Uh, if you have any questions or anything that you want to see us talk about next time, drop us a note in the Discord. Uh, we definitely have a lot of material that we've been throwing around ideas, but I also have very ADD at the moment. And it's pretty late. I've been up since 6 a.m. So... <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, it's kind of close for me as well in the sense that I've been up since 6 plus. Difference being that oh. it is only 10 a.m. for me now. <laughs> so 6 a.m. is just four hours ago. But yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah so I think... Definitely, there's a lot of what we have talked about that we still can expand further more. But I think, yes, this is a good place to stop for now. And, you know, if you'd like to know more, you know, get to know us a little better and, or get to know Chinese culture better, do join us on our next stream. We do this every week. We try to do it on the same time. But due to scheduling, sometimes we may have to change uh, some time, like some, uh, some of our regular schedule. Sometimes it may be... Saturday mornings, uh, either it'll either be Friday nights, uh, well, nights for me, Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern time for anyone in the West, um, 8 a.m. I don't know what your time zone is. Singapore time. <laughs> Singapore time uh, for the GMT other side plus of the planet. Eight. <laughs> plus eight. Um, or, or it will be Saturdays starting at 9 a.m., uh, but again, please feel free to join our Discord if you have questions, if you have anything you want us to talk about, if, like he said, you just want to hang out with us. We're there. We're there all the time. Because we work all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, just do chat in Discord as well. Even if we're not streaming, we if we are online, we will try to say something back. I mean, Prince Kaladin knows because he chats with me sometimes. Uh, yeah, and with that you know do some shameless plugs check out the novels that i translate that is uh immortal and martial dual cultivation which is also a project that fluffy worked on in the past um yes. that project is completed and free to read at hostednovel.com my current um yep it is goat greatest of all I times mean... i had to learn that somewhere last year i i IMDC is is wonderful. It's Dragon Ball <laughs> Thank you for the effort. <laughs> uh, we should probably get set it up so that we can do the Discord command, uh, and it will drop an invite directly in here. Yeah, um, makes sense. So also check out Everlasting Immortal Feminine, my current novel, and when the new novel pops out, which is a current secret project somewhere next week. Ooh, hopefully, secret. hopefully, hopefully. Uh, assuming like I can gonna, get round to work. stop procrastinating. Um, but, you know, do check that out when it comes out as well. Then for the rest of you, you know, there are other links down in the description below. My merch store. And so, oh, speaking of merch, yeah. So for those of you who can see, okay, I'm wearing my lab coat, but this is one of the dragon and white t-shirts I'm wearing. I especially wore this today, in fact. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, here's one of them. This one is grey, I think, but the colour's been washed out a little. So you can see the dragon in white logo here. Not logo, but you know, the profile picture. And a nice massive one. Hey, when do we get fluffy t-shirts? Give me a design that I can use and I can put it up. Nice. Yeah. But, yeah. So, you know, merch store down in the description below. You can check it out. And, uh, you know, Patreons and whatnot. And, of course, you know, subscribe to the channel... Like the video, ding the bell, follow on Twitch, 
and whatnot. And with that, I think that is it for the both of us. And we'll see you guys next time. Ciao! See you next week! Bye!